We are at the Axelar Interoperability Series, and next up in this conversation, we are talking to Jordy of the ZK EVM. Used to be uh, ZK Hermes, but then it was acquired by Polygon to make the ZK Polygon EVM, uh, which is now one of uh, the hottest wars in the Layer 2 space. So that is what's coming up next, right after we talk to some of these fantastic sponsors that make the show possible. Kraken is our strategic sponsor for 2023. Why? Because Kraken has been around for over 12 years and has proven itself to be deeply aligned with the crypto industry. Trusted, centralized crypto platforms are hard to come by these days, which makes the few remaining ones even more valuable. With over 9 million users and not a cent lost, choosing Kraken as our strategic sponsor for 2023 was a no-brainer. We need exchanges like Kraken to provide the on-ramps to get people to go bankless. And Kraken's emphasis on security and transparency makes us feel good about having them as a sponsor. If you're unsure about your centralized exchange or on-ramp, perhaps open an account with Kraken today. And if you're unsure about the rest of Web3, well then maybe you should get your learn on with MetaMask Learn. Learning about crypto is hard. There's no one out there to hold your hand to get into this industry until now. MetaMask Learn is the best place I've ever seen to send someone to learn everything there is to know about Web3. If you're a company trying to onboard employees or you're a son or daughter trying to onboard your boomer parents, MetaMask Learn is the place to send them. Interactive and engaging lessons, making learning about Web3 fun and easy. Now, once you're through Kraken's gates and you've taken the MetaMask course on what's a DEX, you're safe to make your first stop into the world of DeFi. Where better to start other than Uniswap? Uniswap is, of course, a decentralized exchange for crypto asset trades and swaps, but it's now also an NFT aggregator as well, making Uniswap some of the best decentralizing trading tech that's out there. Uniswap's big announcement at ETH Denver is their Uniswap wallet, which is waiting to get released to the public as soon as Apple stops being a big old bully about crypto apps in the App Store. Uniswap is basically on every chain that's relevant in the crypto ecosystem. So if you want to use Uniswap, but with the cheapest possible fees, then use Uniswap on Arbitrum. The Arbitrum Layer 2 is the host of Ethereum's most vibrant DeFi and NFT communities. Arbitrum is already surpassing the ETH Layer 1 in transaction volume, and it's not even close to full capacity. With so many vibrant communities on Arbitrum, Arbitrum is a good place to call home for the era of Layer 2s. Speaking of settling into new homes, the Phantom Wallet is now available on both Ethereum and Polygon. That's right, the number one wallet on Solana is expanding into the Ethereum ecosystem. Phantom is the one wallet for everything. Displaying NFTs, making NFT trades, swapping tokens, staking tokens. So if you're a multi-chain surfer or an NFT power user, then the Phantom Wallet is for you. It also comes in mobile. Check it out at phantom.app. Now, let's get into the interview. Bank of the Nation, we are at the Interop Summit and I'm talking with Jordy from Polygon Hermes. Jordy, how's it going, my man? Very good, very excited to be here in November. You know, yeah. it's, a, it's an important event in the year. Absolutely, and we, I managed to snag you right before you're going on to, a, to talk at a panel. Uh, what's that panel about? What are you going to talk about? Well, we are going to talk very much about connecting rollups. Mm -hmm. You know, this year is going to be the year of rollups. Mm -hmm. We are also seeing, and we are going to be talking about how we connect all these rollups and, mm -hmm. and how we create this community. We keep the Ethereum community uh, together somehow, mm -hmm. so that's uh, that's going to be probably the, the most, the biggest topic on the panel. But we'll yeah. see. Yeah, and uh, w w there's a big conversation going on. Of course, which is at the Interop conference. There's also Interop Interop between layer twos, and I think is this about specifically interoperability between Ethereum layer twos, or is this even broader than that? I think it's about layer twos. Okay. But I mean, uh, I'm open to any to any discussion here. Where, wherever the moderator leads. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not the moderator. Yeah. Uh, so, so uh, Jordi, uh, was Polygon the first zk EVM? Uh, I mean, it's just seeing the first, and, and so we are not even the first yet. Mm -hmm. So we are gonna launch a mainnet uh, on on the on 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 on, on, 20, on March twenty seventh. Uh -huh. If everything goes okay, mm -hmm. uh, and this is not. Oh, it's an important milestone, mm -hmm. but it's not the only milestone. So it's mm -hmm. like we will launch this in mainnet. It's going to be a beta. Uh, it's a lot of improvements needs to be done. Mm -hmm. We still need to add a lot of pre-compiled smart contracts. We need to grow in the scalability. So this is not a matter of who's first, who's last. Yeah. Okay, I know that marketing people, they love this right. stuff, uh -huh. but this is... Content producers also yeah, love I it, know. by the way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and this is, but this is not about that. You know, mm -hmm. this is about building. Here we are um, a strong community, many projects that we are trying to scale Ethereum. Mm -hmm. Each one is building the, you know, the, the solution mm -hmm. they believe in it more. We are experimenting, we are learning a lot, and, and, and we are moving forward on that direction. Mm -hmm. The evolution 
uh, we as a community we did in the last two years uh, has been huge and uh, but still a lot of things uh, to do in all you know in all the sites so I mean we are gonna be the first probably we're gonna be the first in having a complete uh, opcode compatible uh, mm. EBM, mm -hmm. uh, ZKBM uh, in mainnet, in production, open to everybody and with uh, uh, zero, zero friction for the users where you can use. So I think it's an important, it's a very advanced system what we are going to launch. But again, it's, it's an important milestone, but it's just a milestone, that's Certainly. it. Yeah, so when um, business development people or builders or even just users, what, what questions do they frequently ask you? What, what's the frequently asked question when they come up to you and talk about the Polygon ZK EVM? Well, the, que the questions, there are, I mean, there are questions, um, you know, lots, lo all sorts of questions, mm -hmm. but questions about the scalability, mm -hmm. how the rollups will scale, if, uh, you know, and how the compatibility, what if this is going to be compatible or not, what can be done, right. things about that availability. There is a lot of doubts mm -hmm. still in the community. The, it's a new th system, so it's normal right. that the people don't um, fully understand how everything uh, how mm -hmm. everything works all mm -hmm. together. There are some confusions. We are trying to clarify some confusions. Last week in Twitter, I was just trying to clarify, for example, things about the scalability. Sure. Now, the, the, the prover is not the limitation on the scalability, okay? This is one of the topic, okay? Mm -hmm. But things about the, the sequencer, when we are talking about a centralized sequencer, what that what that what it means, okay? Right. That doesn't mean that's, uh, yeah, it's centralized, but it's not, you can, you can, you can still have uh, uh, some properties of decentralization, mm -hmm. like, like uh, censorship resistant and uh, uh, so on. And even if what happened if the sequencer just falls on right. what happened with it, there's a lot of things uh, that we need to explain mm -hmm. and uh, how, the, how, this, the, how, how this works. So walk us through the timeline for the Polygon ZK EVM. When, when will I be able to go play on it? So right now you can already play it. You know, it's a testnet. Mm -hmm. uh, been running for, it has been running for uh, two months or yeah. more than two months right now. Uh, we, next week, well, tomorrow, if everything works okay, we probably will do a regenesis of this okay. testnet. It's like regenesis a final... is when you like shut it down, start it back up again. Yeah, it just and we... that's in, that's now it's mainnet. Yeah, it's it's going to be very close mm -hmm. to what should be in, in mainnet. We're still running the final audits sure. and finding even now just finding mm -hmm. things. Security is a huge topic. I think sure. this is a, the probably is the thing that have more concern on that. Okay, mm -hmm. we're doing we're spending a lot of effort inside the team and outside the team on, 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 on that. And if everything, again, if everything works uh, as it should, uh, we should launch on, on, on March 27, this beta version mm -hmm. of, a, of a mainnet. And what does that beta, beta version mean? Like what's beta the difference between beta and mainnet? It, it's mainnet, but it's the first mainnet mm -hmm. deployment. Okay. So expect that there is bugs there. Sure. Expect that it, it's the first version, mm -hmm. okay? Expect that we are probably going to change things sure. uh, uh, in there. So it's, a, it's an important step because right. at some point you need to launch and at some point you need it's like to- like training wheels? Training wheels. Yeah. We are going to start with the training wheels sure. one. Um, we are going to have a kill switch. Mm -hmm. so it's, we're right. going to remove that as soon as, as we can, but it's mm -hmm. going to be a kill switch. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be some central points mm -hmm. uh, on there. We are trying to keep, uh, you know, as prevent, as preventive and as sure. safe as possible. There is always a risk. It's important right. that the people understand that this is, a, you know, a first versions. First versions of anything, it's easier to have bugs. We are, you know, we are running. We run it a lot of audits. We run it internal audits. We are gonna run a bug bounty. We are gonna continue running audits. We will spend as much as we can on security. We need to 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 to, to launch this just to to spin up this and to 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 have this in production. Uh, We'll see. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's an important, it's an step, it's an important step. It's, it's a step that at some point we have to do, but the people that's using this, uh, this uh, network needs to understand sure. uh, what they are using and right. what's, uh, what's the status uh, of this network. So it's, that's why it's important to say that this is a beta, that this is the first version, right. that please be cautious right. on right. how you are using that right. uh, or that. I think it's important that the users understand Right. what it is. Don't go crazy, you know, don't do some airdrops, billionaire, right. 
airdrops or staking or whatever in there, okay? Right. Because uh, I don't want to hear, it's a lot of stake. It's not mm -hmm. only calling on stake, mm -hmm. it's also the ecosystem stake and Ethereum sure. stake. So here sure. we should not go crazy mm -hmm. in, 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 in these new technologies uh, right. that just uh, out of the oven mm -hmm. uh, uh, in there. Could you help me understand what does it mean to have a bug in a ZK EVM? I think that's the, the whole ZK world is a new frontier for all of us. And for the non-technical people like me, when you say like, oh, there could be bugs, what what yeah. kind of bugs could there be? Yeah. How let, bad let me, could that me, be? So here we categorize the bugs in four 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 categories, mm -hmm. okay? And um, let me explain, let me just name the four. Mm -hmm. First one is a smart contract box, sure. just normal smart contract. This is right. normal thing. Not at, not at the protocol layer. This is then we have uh, the, the others are in the prover box. Sure. Okay, the prover we have three three types of box. We have the uh, correctness box, mm -hmm. we have the soundness box, and then we have like a situation where you cannot prove. It's like a stop sure. a stop a stop the prover. You can right. it's a the prover you, breaks. The yeah. prover breaks and yeah. the prover it's not it doesn't move forward. Sure. Okay, so that's another kind of box. Of these three, of course, smart contracts is as critical as right. any other smart right. contract. Sure. That's a technology we know about. Right. So that, that's, that's a known a, quantity. You know, yeah. The, yeah, exactly. So, but the, here, the, the most critical one is the correctness one. Right. Correctness one means that you are executing a normal transaction, and maybe at the final of this transaction, you get an infinite amount of ether. Right. Okay? That's right. something right. that would be a, 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 mm -hmm. a bug, and it would be a really a bad bug right. because we could not do very much on right. that. Well, we could press a kill switch right. in the mainnet if we see that and just try to avoid the the the, the, the withdrawal. We have some mm -hmm. mechanisms to monitor that and so on. But it's 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 uh, this is a really hard bug. Here we need to say here that I'm quite confident uh, with this uh, uh, with this kind of bugs because we pass all the Ethereum tests, mm -hmm. all, the, all the Ethereum tests that applies. Okay, so if we. This Ethereum test about a smart contract that we are not implementing, of course, this mm -hmm. doesn't pass, but that's not because there is a problem. Right. Okay, but for the relevant uh, tests, all the relevant tests to the ZKVM, which is are which are the most most of them, they are passing. So mm -hmm. this means that the the correctness of the of the protocol is is very well uh, proven. Sure. Okay. Of course, there are some still some specific things on the EVM that. We, you don't have the, never the 100% warranties, okay? Mm -hmm. But here I'm quite confident that this uh, this correctness, together with all the audits and all together, we should be okay on that. But again, mm -hmm. uh, never 100%, like mm -hmm. smart contracts, you never mm -hmm. are, are 100% confident uh, on that. But the degree of confidence is, uh, I would say, is high enough sure. to to to, right. to launch in a in a beta. Okay? Sure. Then we have uh, soundness. Soundness is, I mean, this is probably the one that's, I'm, it's, so it's the one that's easier to be. So it's mm -hmm. very easy that we find some soundness error. We did a lot, a lot of work just checking on that, but we find a lot of them. So it's easy that maybe there is, there are some more that, mm -hmm. that we find in the future. Mm -hmm. For this, okay, this is, we need to move forward and try to find them and, and, mm -hmm. and, and move. But the, the good thing of these bugs is that if one of these bugs is in the system, the, the, the user will not lose funds. Sure. Okay? So we are going to be at the beginning the, the, the only prover and we are not going to prove something wrong. So it's uh, literally is uh, impossible or very difficult to, for one of these errors to, to impact in the in a user funds. Mm -hmm. Probably the system will become centralized. So the idea is that the system falls back in a centralization. Mm -hmm. We probably will have to update, to upgrade the, right. the smart contract, but the user will not impact in the user funds or something mm -hmm. like that, as far as we are uh, trusted, which sure. is, is not we are building, okay? Right. So that's a, right. that's why it's important to go through all the all these bugs and find all of these soundness bugs. So mm -hmm. it's important to, 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 to go to all these soundness bugs. But, from the mainnet pr launch perspective, this is less critical right. because these this ones. And the last one is that the, the, that you just stop the network. Right. And here is just a timeout. So if mm -hmm. uh, the network is stopped for six months, then the, the network will just halt and we just upgrade the contract. Mm -hmm. So like soundness, uh, well, this would be a, maybe a bigger impact, but more in the operation because the network maybe would be stopped uh, for maybe one week. Uh, sure. What's well, a timeout right. uh, on that? 
but that would be the impact. So it would not, in one week, the, we just upgrade the smart contract and the users, Prover will continue running and their right. users will recover. So these are the four uh, categorizations okay. of the bug. I think I explained you very much the concerns and the, mm -hmm. the, here the balances and the right. trade-offs mm -hmm. uh, for launching. Um, I think it's important here to be very, very, very transparent and explain right. this uh, very clear, especially for early users. Uh, but again, this is, you know, we need to move forward on that. You know, if we need to wait, but this is, this happens to any blockchain project. Mm -hmm. So if you need to wait to be 100% sure that your system is safe, you will never launch. Right. Yes. But right. in the other side, you can also not, you know, you cannot be crazy. You cannot right. launch things that right. you know that the probability of being bugs are going to be high. So here, finding the right trade off on mm -hmm. when you launch, uh, mm -hmm. what's this, well, how much did you minimize the risk? This is, I would say, probably this is the most difficult decision making that right. any blockchain project right. needs to take at some uh, at some point. And this is where we are right now in, 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 in Polygon. Certainly. Well, I really appreciate all that thought process and the idea of just some natural balance between order and chaos comes to mind, where you can't be too ordered because you'll never launch, but you definitely can't be chaotic because that doesn't go in crypto. Uh, the, and the, the bankless metaphor of this is the frontier also comes to mind. And so, uh, you know, to the rewards go the bold. But also, you don't want to be too bold because you might die and never come back. And so, Jordi, I know you got to talk to, to run to, so I appreciate all of your time and walking us through uh, the Polygon ZK EVM. I really appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Cheers. Yeah.